Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hello and welcome to E3 2013. I'm Chad Johnson. I'm Lamar Wilson. And uh, we are here at E3 in Los Angeles, California. E3 is a conference for video gamers, developers, and and for like big companies like Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo to show off all of their uh, their new consoles, their new games. And this is really like a, a a gamer's paradise. Right. If you are a fan of video game news, checking out the new consoles. That is what we're going to do Absolutely. Today. Let's go and get to it. We're in front of the West Hall here, and in about 10 minutes, the doors are going to open, and we are going to, like a mob of crazy hungry fans, we're all going to file into the West Hall they here. They might here. actually kill us. But... You know it's, what? It's all fun. Sacrifices have to be made for the news that we are going yeah. to uncover today. That's awesome. Uh, we have a great guy with us. This is Nathan. How are you doing, Nathan? Super good. Insanely excited. Insanely excited. So excited. I can't talk right now. Um, so uh, what are you looking forward to right when we get through the doors? Are you? Do you have a plan? Do you know where you're going to head? First thing is Smash Brothers, for sure. The rest is just bonus. What do you think about the Wii U? What's your honest, honest opinion? Needs games. Are you excited about this E3? Yeah. I can't wait. It's my first E3. Where are you from? I'm from Ohio, actually. This wow, you came yeah, all the way from there. Yeah, all the way from here. Um, with the new console cycle, this is the year to go. This guy, Kingdom Hearts, Hearts fan. Baby. We're actually uh, game designers fresh out of college, so we can, this is our second year coming to E3. We just like seeing what's new. Which game design company? Let's pimp it. Let's let's uh, let people know. We, uh, I started one that we're up and coming, Glitch Gaming. And here we are. E3. Check this out, guys. Okay, so we're so, headed, yeah, we're our, towards PlayStation our right now. first thing is in PlayStation. Excellent. And right off the bat, awesome looking car. Oh. Uh, they're definitely pimping Gran Turismo 6, uh, which is has been the driving game on PlayStation for a while. Now, of course, there's, they've gotten a lot of competition from Forza. Forza is really coming on now. To, Forza is a to, huge competition to, to for that. Their crown. And so they're definitely pushing hard on that. Um, it looks like just a quick overview of the PlayStation booth. We have lots of... A lot of PS3 games. A lot of PS3. They have a Lego Mar Marvel Super Heroes. I will have to definitely play that later. I mean, look at just look at Hulk right what? there. Oh, my God. That is amazing. Isn't Hulk perfect for smashing Legos? Heck yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> What? What is now, this? Now this guy? is just the cutest. Now these are PS4 games, yeah, games PS4. that are not out. So we have ba Black Light Retribution um, here in person. First, the graphics look great. Graphics look yeah. great. So I, so I think one thing that was said about both of these consoles, especially uh, the PlayStation 4, is that the graphics are improved, but it's not anything. It's more evolutionary than revolutionary. Right. Like there, there's nothing here that's like, oh right. my god, I've right. never seen graphics. I'm not like, like this a, a billion pixels on the screen at once. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you are just there too cool. There we go. Well, let's check out some more of this booth. All right. What is this about? Okay. So, Octodad, you have a controller, and you can move the Octo Octodad's arms around with the joysticks. But obviously, this um, is a little bit weird. So let me grab the cushion. What am I trying to do here? I'm, let me put the cushion on the other. Remove all the cushions. I got to pull the cushions off of this table. So there we go. Oh, oh, look at that. I found the key. I got it. Oh, got yeah. This could be hours and hours of fun. Okay, so I need to unlock the cabinet. Oh, it's in front of me here. All right, got it. Got it. And now open the cabinet. This looks crazy. So, what okay, is this? I got it. Oh, I got it. Oh, I bought it. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. All right, you just destroyed okay. your whole house, man. Oh, God. Anyway. That, yeah. Octo Dad. <laughs> available for the PS4. Chad should not be a spokesman for this no. game. Cool. Shannon, our producer, is telling us we got some crazy stuff. Right. We are in a secret room deep inside of E3 that most people don't get to check out. We actually have PS4 hardware behind me, and this is actually the first time that I've been this close to the hardware. 
and you can also sort of get a perspective on how large the actual box is. Um, just really a quick overview. Um, it's it pretty much looks like a, a tilted uh, Xbox One, but you have a nice accent going through the middle um, of light, and you have two USB ports in the front, and your disc um, is right in between those two layers there. Now, we also get a nice overview of some of the other peripherals that they are um, touting, like the PlayStation camera. Now, I want to get more information about the PlayStation camera, which is in the back there. I really want to see, is this a competitor to the Kinect, or is it just another PlayStation camera? To help me talk about this is Subasa. Hi, Subasa. And what do you do? What's your, what's your title? Uh, I'm a senior producer at Sony Computer Entertainment America. I'm helping out with the, the Playroom project. Very cool. So this is the Sony Playroom. Let me know. So. I can see lots of little androids running around. They seem to be doing different things based off of the context around them. Um, like there's a there's an item that he just threw into the world that the robots seem to get gather towards. Let me know a little bit about what we're seeing and what's going on. This, this is a demonstration of uh, not only the camera, as you can see, the fidelity of the camera is fantastic, uh, but also the interaction of of moving objects within the screens. For example, it probably if I can get closer to a little closer, it'll actually interact with me. So go ahead, Chad, you can jump in. Exactly. So very intuitive, very reactive. And as you notice, uh, Nicola, who's sitting on the sofa right now, he has an Android device tablet um, where basically this is the companion app part of the PlayStation 4. So what he's drawing on his tablet, he can eventually flick it into the uh, environment, the living room, uh, for the bots to interact with. So there's a lot going on here. Um, you know, with the, yeah, so Some of the things that I'm, I'm wanting to know about is, uh, one, he, it seems like he has lots of capabilities using the touch screen on the controller. If he like, uh, holds down, it looks like they get sucked into his controller. And then we get this kind of cool view from inside the controller as the bots are uh, being shaken around. Um, and that touch screen can be, it looks like it's a really high fidelity touch screen. Um, uh, so what are the things that, that just specifically the touch screen will do in this demo? Uh, and specifically for this demo, uh, as you see, uh, if he presses down on the touchpad, uh, that will actually act like a vacuum. So it sucks the little bots back into the controller. Uh, and eventually, if he flicks inward on the trackpad, uh, you will get an inside view of the controller. So it looks. So again, as you see, you're now inside the controller, you're with the bots, and you'll also see the interaction of the buttons. And as you push them, the different sounds, the different reactions, it, it's, it's just wonderful. You know, it's really cute. Um, and again, it talks to the new feature sets that we're offering. Now we are going to get to check out very, very exciting Beyond Two Souls. Victoria is here with me to help me make sure that I don't look like a complete noob in the game and also give us a little bit of background. How are you doing, Victoria? Doing pretty well. So Beyond is the story of Jody Holmes, who, as you may know, is played by Ellen Page. And over the course of the game, you're going to play through her life key moments from the time she's eight years old until she's 23. So in this level here, our demo, she's a CIA agent, and she's been tasked with finding a warlord named Jamal. So you've been put into Somalia, and it's your job to find and eliminate this warlord. So I'm going to go ahead and give the controls to you. One of the things you're going to notice is that we've tried our best with the combat to do away with the quick time events as much as possible. So you're going to get some tutorial on that. And um, also, you're going to be able to play as both Jody and Aiden, the entity that is connected to her. Um, and that's one of the reasons the CIA recruited her is because she has these special powers. OK, so now I'm in control of Aiden, and I'm sort of looking around. Oh. Let's, let's aim for that guy. He's highlighted in red. That makes me think that, that he, he's a bad guy. The, well, you have the instructions on here, but the L1 button will lock onto a target. And Aiden has a number of different abilities. This one that you're just using was the choke. You can also possess people or blast objects in the environment. Very cool. So I'm getting, I sort of have this way to control him with both sticks. Um, and let's go ahead and choke him again. I don't think I choked him hard enough. It's time, time to die, you insurrectionist. Um, and there he goes. He's down. OK, so as Aiden, he's, he's almost a little, um, uh, I can lock on to characters uh, using the L1. Here we go. We got another one. That's right. OK, let's go get a better.
Here we are. Oh, looks like I'm gonna smash down this wall. I'm sure that throughout the game, muscle memory will become much easier. So here you're gonna see our new combat system, and it's not quick time events. The game's gonna slow down and wait for input from the player using the analog stick. So you're gonna try and finish Jody's move. So here, she's moving back, you're gonna move back as well. Got it, so it's very intuitive. It's like, um, listen, I think that using just the stick, it's time for her to move forward, down, and uh, down again. And then are these uh, to the side? Oh, that was bad. Uh, back, back, back up. Oh no, oh no, oh no. X, 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 X. So uh, this seems more intuitive. Is, is there multiple ways that the scene can play out? Sure, even, even down to the combat, depending on whether you're succeeding or failing at these moves, you're gonna see different choreography in the fighting. And there's also, within the game, many different ways to solve a lot of the challenges that you're presented. So sometimes you might be possessing a character, and sometimes you might be just kind of brute force going in. Wow, okay. I just, I just made him slice his own neck open. That was kind of insane. All of these events seem so handcrafted. And I mean, I assume Ellen is acting out all of these. Is it true? I mean, how? It almost seems like you couldn't do this for for an entire game because there's there's just too much to it. There's too much handcrafted material. Do you happen to know how long playing through this game will take? The game's going to take about ten hours. And to your point about it being ha uh, very handcrafted, um, I know Ellen spent four weeks with the team doing motion capture, and every single acting scene that you see is Ellen acting. We did full performance capture, 64 cameras, voice and body capture at the same time to create like really seamless experience for the users. This, is, this looks awesome. Um, any availability for uh, Beyond Two Souls? Beyond Two Souls is coming out on PlayStation 3, October 8th. October 8th, well we can look forward to Beyond Two Souls. Then, let's go play some more games. Now, we are here with Tom, who is the art director of Killzone Mercenary, APS Vita. How are you doing? Nice. Doing great. How's E3 treating you so far? Pretty good, pretty good. I only just got it, but uh, yeah, it's exciting. Lots going on. Right, it'll be, it'll be a circus. So, uh, Killzone Mercenary is a PS Vita title. Can you let me know a little bit about it? Sure. So, Killzone uh, Vita is um, the new game from the Killzone uh, franchise. It's coming to Vita in September, and it is designed for the Vita system, but it's um, very much in the Killzone world, and it's a really exciting, and I think actually unique experience on the Vita kit. I think it's the, the first time you can truly say you've had an FPS uh, experience in your hands. Oh, and so for people who don't know, can you explain a little bit about the Killzone universe um, and, and sort of just a tiny bit of backstory? So Killzone uh, is a game we like to call it kind of hard sci-fi. It's quite gritty and grounded. Um, the game, it's had quite a few versions of it. So it started off with Killzone 1 on PlayStation uh, 2, and then Killzone 2 and Killzone 3 were on PlayStation 3. There's a Killzone 4 coming out on PlayStation 4, Shadowfall, and this is the Vita version, Killzone Mercenary, which is a slightly different take on the Killzone universe because you actually play as a mercenary character and basically you go for the biggest contracts. You at the points you play for both sides in the war, as opposed to just playing the kind of traditional uh, role you've seen in previous games. Perfect. You are on your own side. You are your own your manager. Own man. Yeah. You just want the biggest paycheck. So you're kind of unscrupulous, and you're just after a big, fat paycheck at the end of the day. Perfect. That building needs to go down. Perfect. Let's do it. Well, let's go through some play th uh, playthrough here. It's kind of traditional first-person controls. We have. Um, some tactile input as well because it's a front touch screen and a rear touch screen but what we've tried to do is to incorporate that in a non-invasive way so for instance if you walk close to that guy who's just shot that guy on the floor if you walk up to him you get this kind of uh touch icon that allows you to to melee him ha got him down oh, that's you. Because you were behind him, you just you just killed him outright. If you were in front of him or a bit closer, you, it would, give, would have given you a gestural input that you could have um, actually swiped the screen. Perfect, perfect. Okay, and so I'm just it just shoot at everyone, right? I I, I assume. Uh, this is this is really responsive for um, mobile mobile device. Let's go ahead and how do I? Sorry, what? Uh, no, I just I want to. Yeah, let's use some of this stuff. 
are tactical weapons. These are new to the kill zone experience as well. Uh, you're in quite a heavy firefight, <laughs> so you got shot out of the sky pretty quickly. Um, but actually, because you're a mercenary, you have you get cash for everything you you do, whether you kill people or you pick up uh, ammo, and that cash allows you to buy new weapons and new tactical weapons, both in single player and in multiplayer. The cash is persistent throughout the whole game, so everything you earn allows you to better yourself and allow you to equip your kind of custom loadouts depending on the style of gameplay you want to actually play in the game. Perfect. Um, toss a grenade. In. Now, is there? it looks like there's a cover mechanic. What, how would I activate that? If you go to any cover and press circle, you'll kind of pop up behind it. There we go. There we can <laughs> Nice. Perfect cross shot. That's what I wanted there. Uh, very interesting. Oh. You're trying to talk to me at the same time as well. You're doing a lot better than I would. It's a weird, yeah. It's a, it's a hard, it's a hard. Well, that's really awesome. This is Killzone Mercenary for the PS Vita. Um, any idea on availability yet? Yep, it's coming out worldwide in early September. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Tom, for letting us check it out. I'm here with the directors of the great game, The Last of Us, and we have Neil here, the creative director, and Bruce. Which, uh, what kind of director are you? You are the game director, so he he does everything with the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so tell us about this game first of all. This is for the PS3. It's a new game. Yeah. And what's the premise of it? Well, the premise is uh, two survivors, Joel and Ellie, are trying to make their way across this post-pandemic United States. Okay. Uh, you know, things hit the fan, this pandemic breaks out, and Joel uh, reluctantly is kind of paired up based on a friend's dying wish with Ellie, and he's, he's, he's asked to take her across to this militia group called the Fireflies. We won't get another shot at this. I want Joel to watch over her. What on earth do the Fireflies want with you? And was this inspired of any other type of apocalyptic Neil, what type do you of think? Events? Is it inspired by something? I know. There we go. You don't want to hold it for me? Uh, all sorts of things. You know, one of the biggest things for us, uh, we saw No Country for Old Men uh, while, okay. we were, while we were working on Uncharted 2. Awesome. And just like the tone and the tension and the minimal use of dialogue and minimalist use of music okay. um, was really inspiring to us of like the kind of feeling it evoked. And we're like, no one has really captured that kind of feeling in a game and we felt like we could do that. Uh, and the other thing that we really wanted to do from the get-go is we said, what if we did a whole game based on a relationship with these two characters? So when they first meet, nice. they don't really like each other, but over the course of hours, many, many hours, slowly they're going to build this, this bond, this relationship. And by the end of it, you know, they're willing to make like extreme sacrifice for one another. And we felt you know, we could really capture a, a father-daughter-like relationship through gameplay. I think that's awesome. So in, in gameplay, how important is story? nowadays with these type of games. I mean, obviously you want to have a game that's pretty long to satisfy the, the buyer, but how important is getting the story right and getting and, and making people feel like they're part of it? Uh, I think it's everything. I mean, mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't buy into their plight, into what's at stake, mm -hmm. then you don't really care about what you're doing. But if you do buy into it, and then, then the gameplay has so much more meaning behind it, and then we can really take advantage of what our medium has, which mm -hmm. is interactivity. So, so through actions, through the two of you relying on one another and helping each other, you're creating this bond. So like when Joel is yeah. cinched up by someone and slammed against the wall, Ellie's gonna pick up a brick, throw it at the guy, give you an opening just to breathe, and then you feel like, oh, I survived because of her. I've, 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 I've got to live another day because I relied on this kid. Okay, so what, what makes these characters so so likable? Is, is, it, is it the antagonistic part of, of them not really caring for each other in the beginning and then building up a friendship? Is that kind of what makes it uh, makes them likable at the end, maybe? Well, what's interesting is Joel is born before the pandemic, before everything like hits the Got fan, it. everything collapses, systems, all the luxuries that we know every day are gone okay. at this point. And, and Joel has seen a lot of loss and, and you know, he's mm -hmm. seen families ripped apart, he's seen society collapse, so okay. he has a very different perspective than Ellie who was born after. It's 20 years ah, okay. uh, after the pandemic hits okay. is when this takes place and Ellie's 14 years old. So gotcha. she, she only knows a world that is kind of like you know, militias are, are existing and fighting military. Military are exactly. laying down a, a, a martial law upon a quarantine zone to try to like keep the infection at bay. Mm -hmm. So she's seen people die like, like it's, that's a Wednesday for her. That's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. So you see these two people, it's like a black okay. and white sort of contrast. You bring awesome. those two characters together and it adds interesting drama. Okay, so in TV we have Revolution, we have The Walking Dead and some of these other post-apocalyptic shows. It, did you feel that this was a good time to release this game because we're all kind of 
in this mode of watching these shows where what happens 10 years later, 20 years later, after the lights go out or after a sickness comes through? It really came down to the story we wanted to tell and the game we wanted to create. Okay. It was a, uh, you know, we felt like this world could really apply the pressures, like seeing what happens to humanity. We wanted to see the best yeah. and worst of humanity. And that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of one of the things we explore in this. And this world where everything's falling apart really applies the pressure on humans and forces them to make those interesting decisions. Okay. Like, are you going to kill somebody for their shoes or are you going to try to barter or are oh, you? Wow. So these kinds of, you know, factions get created inside of this world. Mm -hmm. And that really like, you know, dictated like, the story, the, the, the characters, what we wanted to tell dictated the world we, we wanted to create. So, so, so let me t ask about that. So you have a situation where, like you said, you have to decide to kill someone for their shoes. Does that determine the change the course of the game or is it pretty linear throughout the game? Can, can, can you like do one action and could do a completely different course? Is that is that, that kind of game? It's uh, the story, you know, there's something very specific we're trying to say. Okay. So in, in that standpoint, you know, you're gonna experience a very specific story, a very specific arc with these two characters okay. and what they're experiencing. But within the gameplay space, you know, we really open things up. So when you see a group of guys in front of you and they're out there searching for you, you could try to engage them if you've scavenged enough weapons okay. and uh, you're able to craft items to, to fight them head on. Mm -hmm. Or if you could try to like sneak around them and take them out quietly. Or you could try to Very sneak nice. all the way around and just avoid combat altogether. Okay. And we really wanted to give the player those kind of options, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a story of survival. And sometimes, you know, it's uncompromising. You have to do really horrible things to survive. And that's kind of the gray area we wanted to explore with these characters is they aren't necessarily yeah. good guys or bad guys in this world. They're just what they're trying to achieve is different and only one yeah. person can survive in a situation. Yeah, I, I really like those kind of games with that moral dilemma. It, it, it really makes you feel more immersed in it, I, I think, than, than anything. You know, instead of a game taking me where they want to go, I have I get to make some decisions, you know, that, that makes me think about it afterwards. Wow, well, I just killed somebody for, you know, some, some shoes. You know, I, I, it makes it keeps me up at night. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, we, we put these two characters against each other so they can question each other and they mm -hmm. question kind of the decisions they have to make, the really difficult decisions okay. they're making. So um, who are you marketing this to? Who, who's, who's, the, who's the target audience? Anybody who likes good story and good games. I mean, really, okay. that's that's really what it comes down to. Okay. It's not for kids. Okay. It's not a, for it's an even though a kid game. is in there. Even not though a kid is in there, okay. it's an M-rated game. You know, it, it's, mm -hmm. it gets pretty dark at times. But, you know, we felt at the end it's, it's a very human story. Um, and anyone that just is really into narrative, story, mm -hmm. action experiences, they're, they're going to love this okay. game. Is there... Um, uh, t like, is there tw is it a twenty-hour game, or can it go infinite, or is it a? You it's, haven't it's the longest campaign Naughty Dog's made yet. I mean, nice. and okay. uh, I mean, we, we the Uncharted series averages somewhere around 12, 10, 12 hours, and it's it's longer than that. So okay, yeah. awesome. Okay, so that la last question: How how much more fulfilling is this than doing Uncharted? Like the, doing this kind of storyline with it. It's just a different experience. It's just different. You know, we wanted okay. to explore just different themes, different sto a different genre. You okay. know, we created what we call a survival action genre. Okay. Um, you know, we love Uncharted, but this is just something new that we get a chance to do, okay. and we're happy. So I actually lied. I have one more question. Oh, <laughs> when will this be released? How can I buy this? June fourteenth, this Friday. Wow. Let's do it. Okay, make sure you all buy this game. The Last of Us, I'm going to get it, even though I don't have a PS3. I, I'm actually getting, no, no, seriously, I'm getting a PS3 from a friend. I love games like this, so I'll be checking this out. Make sure you all check this out. Thank you all so much for your time. Yeah. All right, and let's check out some more of E3. We are checking out Drive Club, which is a new PS4 title. We're here with Alex, the art director for Drive Club. Hello. So let me know a little bit about Drive Club. What's the backstory? Uh, where are you guys coming from with this well, game? Well, um, Evolution Studios have been doing driving games for a hell of a long time now. So we did the Motorstorm series on the PS3, and then before that we did uh, a Rally series on PS2. So this is a culmination of all that effort. Um, so about 10 years ago we came up with this idea, but it wasn't really made possible to make it that tall at that point. So it's taken until the technology's caught up with the PS4 to actually be able to make the game that we envisaged 10 years ago. Very cool. So we're gonna check, we're looking at which track is this? It's uh, one of our Scotland tracks. It's uh, sort of mid spring, but yeah, nice dark, dour, typical Scot Scottish evening. So you'll see uh, quite a few things. You'll see our procedural procedural cloud system and uh, all our new lighting systems. So you get full dynamic time of day. So the track's different every time you play it. Um, 
And yeah, you'll get to see some of our cool cars racing around and some of the social elements that go on with the face-offs and the overdrives. So let's jump in. So here he is, he's in the game. Now it's cool, right before um, he jumped in, we used the PlayStation Eye to take a photo of me. And so you can see on this ghost car in front of us, we're actually playing someone else socially in the game. Now I assume that this was from a previous score. Yeah, so I'll try and beat him for you. Perfect, you perfect. To top of the leaderboard. Right, exactly. So we, yeah, this this guy right here is who we're trying to get to the top. There we are, success right there at the top. Um, and so does this, will this um, work even when you're not online? Will this work with friends that you're connected through the PlayStation Network? Yeah, yeah the, whole, the whole point is we're going to end up have all these um, face-offs that go on and they're intelligently set, so they'll pick from your friends list, people who are close to the driving uh, abilities of you, so you, you keep progressing up leaderboards. It's not all about being the best in the world, it's all about being better than the people around you. And there's nothing better than being your friend, beating your friends anyhow. I need to be better than the guy down the street that I don't know. I need to be better than my friends and just rub it in their face. So, is Drive Club, uh, it looks definitely like a driving simulator, and that and the simulation is a huge part of the game. What What's new in this version of the game? Well, this is actually, it's, it's, it's a little bit less about simulation than we're used to doing. So, we've started with a really complicated physics model, and then we've made it nice and simple. So Fun! Fun, yeah, well, if you want to use the word fun, we'll use the word fun. But yeah, so the whole point is we want everyone to play it. You know, we don't want just the hardcore driving nuts to be playing. We want anyone who's on Facebook to be able to post times via the game onto Facebook or onto Twitter so all their friends know how well they're doing. So there's no point making it unaccessible. We want it nice and accessible so everybody can play it. Try not to crash. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Um, and so do we, is there any um, uh, knowledge on how many cars will be in the game and, and that sort of um, Well, yeah. It, the actual clubs themselves, you'll have up to 12 friends, so the races will have up to 12 people as well. So you'll be able to race, uh, but you can do asynchronously, so you can post ghost times. You can set up challenges for people to play, so you don't have to be on online at the same time. Certainly, with most of my friends, we're, we've got wives, girlfriends, children, so we can't all get and play online together. So it's, it's the ability to be able to post and challenge everybody that you know by uh, any uh, multimedia to be able to, yeah, beat them. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So this is Drive Club at E3 2013. Thank you so much, Alex, for showing off the game. Cool. And I'll finish your lap time and make sure it's top of the leaderboard. Perfect. When is this available? Uh, this is available for launch. Perfect. Wonderful. You get it when the PS4 comes out. Hey, Lamar Wilson here at E3 2013, and I'm here with the lovely and talented, excellent at everything she does, Justine is Eric, also known as I Justine. How are you doing? Thank you for that amazing intro. You are awesome. Seriously, this is great. Yeah, of course we have Chad Johnson here. I'm, one of I'm the here hosts. too. Not, not, <laughs> we just she's, in real life, we're, we this did. is great. We I'm did. so excited. So Justine, why in the heck would you come to this small little gaming thing? What is it? What? What? Small, why are you here? Are you yeah, kidding me? There's I know, so I know many it's so here. much. It's so much. I mean, I love video games, and, and this and E3 kind of encapsulates everything that everyone is waiting for every year: new games, and this year particularly new consoles oh my God. hello I know. it's going to be great. so it's so exciting so what what's your console of choice i mean i've always been xbox You're i always do, xbox i mean i had a playstation mm -hmm. 3 of course but i've always been xbox yeah. so, i mean starting even from halo so so even with the the new restrictions and everything that xbox doing are you still going to be a diehard xbox fan i mean i will probably get the playstation as well okay. but okay. my main choice is xbox and then people are so upset about this drm thing yeah they are PC gaming, what do you have to do? We've been doing that forever. It's the like, same that's thing. nothing new. And it's publisher's choice. So if a publisher doesn't want to do it, you, you don't have yeah, to. Yeah, they'll have pressure against for people, and, and, they, and a lot of them probably won't do it. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. that's an option. So Okay, so so what, what brings you here? Like, um, I know you've done some work with Call of Duty, and you love Call of Duty so much. I really We still do. have not played each other. We got we got to do that. I keep trying to add you. My friends list is full, but now with the new Xbox One, yes. we will have. <laughs> unlimited friends. Yes. <laughs> I think I don't really think it's unlimited, unlimited. They say unlimited. Well, let's, we're gonna put that to the test, yes, though. Yes, we, yeah. yes, we will. It might be around five thousand, but who has five thousand friends? I don't the know. internet. Yeah. The yeah. internet. Yeah. You, yes. you. <laughs> I yeah. mean, collectively, a uh, YouTube. So, yeah. so tell us why you love Call of Duty, and, and, and matter of fact, Call of Duty Ghosts. What, what, what's so exciting about it? I think I've always been a huge fan of first-person shooters. I mean, even mm -hmm. back all through high school. I mean, we would have LAN parties. I mean, we play Quake Three, Unreal Tournament. You play LAN parties? Oh, I didn't go to my prom. This is what oh, I come on! To, I didn't. Wait. My mom was so. You, you <laughs> had the best prom experience out of everyone here. I know. That's what I said, and everyone's like, "Oh, you're gonna really regret it." I'm like, Did, "Have I been regretted it now?" Nope. Okay. No, but we played um, Unreal Tournament, Quake Three. That was my my game of choice. And every else, they played Counter Strike. 
Never okay. got too into Counter Strike, and then when I started playing more console, um, Halo and Call of Duty, I just really, really enjoy playing Call of Duty. A new Ghost is out. There's a dog who. It, he, we need to talk about this dog. <laughs> do you know? Do you know more information about the dog? Um, I don't think I know any more than what's been publicly already announced. But it's really cool. I got a feeling you have this game at home secretly. I don't. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't announced anything for multiplayer either, which I play so much multiplayer, so yeah. that's really what I'm looking forward to, which yeah. they'll probably announce more. So, um, well, before this, we were talking a little bit about Nintendo, and you got to play the new Mario Kart? Yeah. What is What was that like? Well, I, I mean, love Mario. I'm, actually, I can't get beat. No, wait. I, I can't get beat. I, it, it's it's on. I have a 64. We need to do this. Okay. How, it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, well, we could uh, do come over split and play. screen four away. You know, yeah, absolutely. It's interesting you mentioned the uh, 64 because like everyone, if you mention Mario Kart, there's been stuff for the Wii, but 64 is where it's at. 64 is the and one. And you seem so excited. Is it is it back to the original? Oh, like way far from the original. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's now anti gravity. So what? yeah. You can go up, so the, the maps are now flipped upside down, and so there's so many more aspects. If you've been playing, like even the Mario Kart 7 for DS, it's very similar to that, just anti-gravity. Okay, and you're a DS fan. Like, you, you really want to play more so on that than the Wii U? I do. I mean, I love my Wii U, and I think what I actually did like about the Wii U is mm -hmm. the, the gamepad is very DS-like. I mean, I was yeah. even playing Call of Duty on this little tiny screen. <laughs> very difficult. I don't suggest it. But I, I like mobile gaming. I travel a lot. Everyone's okay. always on the go, and you have that with you at all awesome. times. I still think that the DS is a super strong competitor. Especially when, I, when playing the, the Vita, I almost feel like it's um, it is very powerful, but I almost feel like that's a hindrance. I really like the casual jump into a game. When I'm playing DS, I'm not I'm not one. I'm not a hardcore gamer. If I'm playing. I am a hardcore gamer, but not in that specific time. I want something I can take with me. Is that, Do you kind of agree? 100% oh, agree. I mean, I think even a lot of my friends who are completely just these grown men sitting here playing Animal Crossing and enjoying <laughs> it. I mean, it's, it's a different type of game, and it's a different type of... Um, it really is just completely different. And then even, like, collecting Miis. So, like, these types of events, like E3, and I'll even go to Disney, go to... Uh, DS meetups, like it's it's a culture in its, its own. All right, so let me ask: Are you going to get? I mean, you already have a Wii U. I do. Yeah. All right, so are you going to get the three, uh, the three sixty, the Xbox One, and the PS4 just to have both and I mean, keep them? Or I, I definitely, yeah. Okay. I mean, I probably will. I mean, I've had the PS4 as, or the PS3 as well. Oh, and, you had oh, the PS4. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was kind of an interesting play too with Xbox, where they announced the new Xbox 360 Slim. That was the first thing they announced. I was like, wait a minute. What? Both, yeah. both conferences, they went, okay, we know you're ex really excited about this, but hold on a minute. Let's talk about the old stuff with, with Xbox. It was yeah. the new Xbox 360 with the PS uh, PlayStation Sony. They talked a lot about PlayStation 3 and how they still expect it to be a super strong console going yeah, forward. Yeah, I'm glad none of them are, like, abandoning. They're, they're going to keep supporting all those people who may not want to jump over right away. Exactly, and I think, yeah. it, I mean... The last Xbox was like eight years ago, so it's like, yeah. okay, finally. And some people still have those original Xboxes, and even some wow. people just bought new ones, so they're like, I'm not ready to, to convert completely yeah. over. So we don't hold you too much longer, but no, what, what, what's, a, what's a killer thing that you've seen besides Mario Kart, of course? I mean, I really just got here, so basically okay. all I did was get to see the Nintendo press conference. And okay. it, was, it was awesome. And it was a completely different feeling than being an Xbox or Sony. It was just, like, fun. Like, now, it, was, it was a completely different feeling. Didn't they have something with uh, Pokemon that were, it had fairies? or, or they, I heard they introduced fairies in the new Pokemon game. Like, they will be new Pokemon. I, well, there was two different press conferences. So I saw one that was a separate one, so they might have announced that okay. the first one. Okay, a lot of people I, I hated that. that. Really? Yeah, on Twitter, they were going crazy. I'm not really down with Pokemon. Okay. Yeah, so I, I really... I'm not I'm either. Not sure. I'm a grown man. No, I like I like <laughs> some, some guns. Give the Pokemon some guns and some mm -hmm. weapons and some first-person fighting. Yeah. I'm down. Bring it. I'm going to collect them all. And multiplayer. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. I, I do love multiplayer. And that's another thing, too, with, with Sony. I mean, how's those servers going to be? Yeah, when well, it's know? free, exactly. Look, it's free, but are you going to get what you pay for, which is you don't pay for anything, so that's maybe what you're going to get. I don't know. It's going to be interesting, and people are, I, that are looking to make a decision yeah. and you're not trying to, yeah. just wait. Let it play out. So is there um, a game that you would recommend to the Twit audience, something that they have to have? I think I already know the answer to that, but... I mean, I'm a huge Call of Duty fan. <laughs> yeah, of course. But there are get Call of Duty Ghosts. Dead Rising 3, Okay. you love zombies. Everything is zombies awesome. nowadays. What is with that? I don't know. 
know. I'm waiting for the aliens to come back because that's that's my thing. Uh, Quantum Break for Xbox looks cool. I think it's like sort of a TV show slash game kind of experience. Okay, okay, cool. It looked awesome. When I saw the trailer, I actually got chills. I was like, really? oh, this looks good. Did you see that too? Yeah, and then and it kind of, I'm really into Beyond Two Souls. I cannot wait. It looks like a movie that I get to play uh, play through. I mean, it, it. I mean, even with with the cast, Ellen Page. I mean, it's like. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, no, it looks great. And it's really her. I mean, she has put tons of time into this, and I'm very excited to see where that goes. Oh, I can't wait. I mean, there's just so much. I've got my November just cleared in December. <laughs> I'm like, listen, I, this is what I need to do. Yeah. So, so last question. Um, I, Twitch announced, or well, Xbox announced, they're going to integrate Twitch. Yeah. Now, what is what is that going to do for you? Will you and can enhance your gaming channel to like have live streaming of you playing on on there? I mean, we can kind of already do that now, but the problem is, is how is that going to integrate with, um, can we do like a face cam? Can we do audio over that? Because Absolutely. nobody really wants to watch you play for seven to 10 hours and not saying anything. Like, Ex I need exactly. to tell you why I just died. I it is with some commentary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you need a little of that. But I mean, the, the, the new Connect is 1080p camera, so I, I have a feeling there's got to be. I hope so. There's got to be something. It'll show your whole house, but you know, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe move it really close. I, mean, I think there's still so much that we don't really know yet. Hopefully, there's some secrets that are still ready to be revealed. Okay. Well, I know you're a busy lady. You got some things to go. But thank you so much for doing this interview for the, the Twit Network. I love you We guys. all love you. No, I love you guys. I mean, this okay. is where I started. Leo. That is man. true. Yeah. Way back, Tech TV. Me and my grandmother. This is a complete sidetrack. <laughs> we, I used to come home from school, and we would watch Tech TV every single day. Really? So, like, my grandma's a huge Leo fan. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> that is so cool. All right. We love you guys. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, cool. All right. Cool. Check out the rest of the conference. High All right. Fives. High fives. Oh, <laughs> Six months into the invasion, Nilfgaard's legions had pierced the heart of the northern realms. Behind them, blood-soaked fields, war-swept wastes. A lone wolf roamed these broken lands, a beast slayer, a whirlwind of rage and steel. They say he was a man obsessed, chasing memories, faces, scents. Yet amidst the chaos, he could only follow his heart. We are at the Witcher 3 bo booth talking to Marek. Ma Did I say it right? Yeah. Okay, right. perfect. <laughs> um, and uh, we are checking out all things Witcher 3, the uh, wild hunt. So let me give me a little bit of history about the Witcher franchise, just in case someone doesn't know. Okay, so Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt is a third part of an RPG saga about Geralt of Rivia, the legendary monster slayer. And uh, it's a very story-heavy RPG game focused on mature audience. Perfect. Perfect. And lots of focus on story, on really, uh, it's it's based off of the novels by, I forget the author. Um, yeah, uh, uh, the novels were written by a famous Polish fantasy author, right. uh, Andrzej Sapkowski. Right. And that's where we taken our main protagonist from. Now, one thing that I got to see a short presentation um, back inside of, the, uh, of your room, and it looked like the world was first massive, but then also incredibly detailed. Let me know a little bit about the world of the Witcher 3 series. Okay. So the world of the Witcher 3 is the biggest, I guess, change and improvement in the whole series. Because in the Witcher 1 and the Witcher 2, we were still learning and developing our storytelling skills. Right now, we believe we possess the right skill, and we can focus on expanding the world. So we're adding this final ingredient that allows us to create a an ultimate RPG experience this time, the open world. Um, also, there seem to be some really great set pieces. Let me know a little bit about what you're thinking in terms of the open world to direct players throughout such a big and massive experience. How do you, how do you tell someone you know, what to do next? Okay, so this indeed is a big challenge. We were, um, after we decided we want to create an open, open world game, we knew that we have to uh, spend a lot of time in designing features that will allow us to guide players through the game. So of course we have uh, we have a very good uh, mini map and uh, map and system, which is a quite simple thing, but it allows you to to like uh, know what to do next and where to go. We have a very detailed journal that will always remind you on what's happening in the game. We have those uh, short like histories summing up what happened in the game as you load the game. So there's this very series of different mechanisms that are drawing you back into the game and allowing uh, or delivering you information what to do next and what's happening. Perfect. And then as far as gameplay, what sort of foes can we expect to face in, in the game? 
Okay, so uh, as Geralt is a Witcher, a professional monster slayer, we have a huge variety of different enemies in the game. Um, those enemies, I think, are much bigger and more sophisticated than the ones presented in previous titles. They're using our new AI system. Uh, all of them possess unique skills that are you that they use against Geralt. Right. So you usually have to learn more about the monster, what are his um, skills, what he usually does, and try to prepare to the combat. There's also a very um, important element of gameplay which is monster hunting and it's really connected to monsters so right it's like a sixth sense to, to a, really kind of get into and find those yeah monsters. we call it witcher senses because witcher mm -hmm. is a is a mutated guy and his senses work a bit different than regular people so he can see all those small details in the world he can track monsters he can predict or maybe based on the clues define what kind of monster is, let's say, uh, walking around in some place. And based on this, he can prepare himself to, uh, to actually eliminate him. Perfect. And so uh, I just want to reiterate that it looks incredibly <laughs> detailed. How many hours do you think you can pull off while playing this game? OK, so uh, a rough estimate is that it will give you around 100 hours, 50 hours of main storyline and 50 hours of extra challenges throughout side quests or, or just exploring the world and having fun inside of it. Great. Well, when's availability for okay. The Witcher 3? So The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is coming next year for three platforms, so PC and both next-gen platforms from Sony and Microsoft. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for uh, your time. Thank you. And we are looking <laughs> forward to The Witcher 3 next year. Thanks. Cool. I'm here in the Razer dungeon with all these cool products, and I'm sitting next to the director of product marketing, Keith. How you doing, man? Awesome. Thank you so much for coming by. I, I cannot tell you how excited I am to look at these laptops. I saw them before, and I just, I just got I was just blown away just how thin and how cool they look, and I, now I want one. Okay. So, <laughs> so interview over. I just yeah, want, awesome. I just want one. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about the company Razer first, and then we'll get right into these awesome products you have here. Sure. We're a gaming hardware company for Razer. We make everything from the gamer to the game. Wow. And so whether you're interfacing with one of our keyboards or a mouse or you're using our software like um, Synapse, which runs all the drivers, or Razer Comms, which is our voice over IP software, we pretty much drive all of those different areas for the consumer. So it's pretty exciting for us to be able to have all those touch points. Excellent. So uh, tell, tell me a little bit, let, let's start with the, uh, the laptops here. So this uh, is my, yeah, my new this. precious, which is the, uh, <laughs> the Razer Blade. Of course, I, uh, you know, as I was saying earlier, it's like you know, years of my life on this table. But when you really <laughs> look at it, the Blade itself is the world's thinnest gaming laptop. World's right? thinnest. World's thinnest. And what that People means. People called me the world's thinnest before. <laughs> OK, but it's not true. All right, go ahead. So when you think about that, what that means is like at, at 0.66 inches thin, it's thinner than most, you know, when you could stack two of these up, it's thinner than most competitive gaming laptops. And what that means yeah. for the consumer is it's impossibly thin, it's insanely powerful, and it's designed just for gaming. Okay, and so that's amazing. It, with us putting in a, uh, you know, the new uh, Intel Haswell uh, fourth generation, yeah, yeah, it was the Core i7 yeah. processor, and a GTX class graphics card in here, you're really shoving an incredible amount of power in a really slim, and a thin form factor. In okay. addition to that, we look at all the little nuances and all the additional information or the parts that go into the, the blade, like okay. the anti-ghosted keyboard, the illumination, all of the ability to treat pretty much the same features you get on a desktop gaming keyboard, you get on the blade. So you can assign macros to keys, oh, you wow. can adjust sensitivity on the track gaming grade trackpad based on the game you're playing. So an example being is I could turn up sensitivity really high so I can play Metro here out on the go at a coffee shop or on a plane. And then when I go back into Word, it'll automatically you know, switch when that application launches to a lower sensitivity so I can write an email or do a little okay. work. Now, being a powerful gaming laptop, um, how would it be for video editors? I'm a video editor myself. But can this handle that as well? You know, the great thing about these two systems, we have the Blade and the Blade Pro. Mm -hmm. They both have more than enough power for video editing and awesome. design. My okay. background's in design too, so okay. when I work on Photoshop or whatever, on the Blade Pro, you can see we already have an application's designed specifically for Adobe Premiere. Whoa, so you can what, go what is that screen? Hold on a second. Let so me, this let is me, the Switchblade UI. It's a dynamic tactile display, which has dynamic tactile keys, oh. and an LCD trackpad that allows you to interact directly with your software. But I just saw Facebook and Twitter and all that. What, what happened? Yeah. Yeah, so I can go in here. You, so you can change for different programs? Yeah, so you have all the different icons. You can assign them to the different oh. apps that you want. Oh, We've wow. had about 30 plus apps that are already available. As well as with the trackpad key, you can actually create your own interfaces. So if I want to put 
like my favorite Borderlands 2 wallpaper on here and okay. keys tied directly to Borderlands. Oh. I, when Borderlands launches, that will switch on and pop up right on the screen. That is awesome. So here's, here's an interesting thought um, that, that I've had. I, I'm starting to see a trend away from desktops. Um, are, are you, are, is, is this where you all can capitalize? Because, you know, up to a few years ago, it was kind of rare that people, like game, gamers wanted a big, powerful machine at home and the tower, and they could put in their own hard drives and, and yeah. graphics cards. It, do you see the trend more so towards portable well, gaming? I mean, if you look at PC sales, definitely notebooks are an, an influential place. And if you take a look at um, where we've been going, especially here at Computex, where I was at last week, um, you could see the trend of mm -hmm. after about two years of the blade being on the market, other product manufacturers are coming out with their thin and light, uh -uh. you know, blade bees or whatever, you know, <laughs> notebooks. So for us, we're really excited because it's not about like, you know, it's it's about creating something that gamers want. We'd love to have those systems out in the market, whether it's from Razer or from, you know, other partners or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter to us. We want to make sure that. Gamers are getting what they want, and so if we have to drive a trend to make that happen, we'll do that. Okay. You know? So speaking of driving, I tested out this baby with one of your driving games, and I, oh, I failed miserably. Grid Two is really cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I failed miserably on it. But t tell me about this because this has a Windows, not RT tablet. It has the full window. The so Pro. yeah, it's a full like it's exactly the same, um, you know, kind of form factor piece like you would see a Surface. Uh, uh, yeah, tablet, absolutely. But it's got a dedicated graphics card. And what that means is that with that uh, you know, 600 MLE, the, the NVIDIA graphics card, you got a lot more power. You have the ability to run games, you know, higher end games. So you can okay. play all the tablet titles that you love. There's an accelerometer and all that stuff is built into the tablet. So tablet ones and regular PC? Yeah, so anything wow. that you would have in the main Windows 8 interface will work okay. just fine. The great thing about it is it runs all PC games and applications because it's a PC. That's so, okay. so then I so can. Steam. Yeah. Be on there. Okay. Uh, big picture. So like I can actually, you know, on my unit at home, I take it out of the docking station, plug it in into the dock on my TV, and launch Steam Big Picture with a gamepad oh, controller, wow. and boom, it's on my television set. Get out. So okay. you know, I can get a wireless keyboard and a mouse, and on my big screen TV, I can play Marvel Heroes. That's what I've been playing now. Okay. <laughs> Try, trying to play. So you guys, it's a great game. Um, and you can get that on your on large screen experience. Then if I want, I can sit down on, uh, you know, at my desk, I pull the mm -hmm. tablet off of that docking station, put it on my work computer at the office, and boom, it's hooked up to my monitor and my keyboard, and I'm ready to go. So it's really about flexibility and offer gamers like the environment and the way they want to play. You all might be making uh, Windows tablets cool. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I think this is the coolest, not to mention the fastest tablet on the market. So. Uh, that's awesome. And I, I, love the, I love the controls, they're pretty standard. Controls and I, and I got the chance to play with it. It's a great feel to it. Yeah, it has a nice it's grip a, to a, it. It's a really nice grip. A, any title that's already got compatibility for um, a gamepad controller, or an Xbox controller, and a PC will totally work. So for you, you're not waiting for developers to develop something for this gamepad. It's already ready Isn't to there? go. And so it has, is this out on the market now? Yeah, the Edge is shipping right now. Wow. The uh, Blade Pro will be shipping here in the next couple of weeks. Yep. Um, we're actually trying to, if I can get all my stuff together, ship this week so we can tell fans that we're getting their pre-orders out a little awesome. early. So let, let, let's talk so. about price. Let, let's start with this beautiful. Uh, the, uh, the Blade starts at $17.99. Okay. Um, and then the uh, Blade Pro. When you say start, is there other thing where you can add more memory and, and we really, other customizations? Really it has pretty much everything's optimized, but we do offer a 128, a 256, and a 512 SSD form okay. factors. For gaming, you probably yeah. need a good, so, a good amount of hard drive Yeah, space. so depending on how much space you want or you need. Okay. And then the Edge itself uh, is starting at 999 and then Really? Mm -hmm. That's a good price. So, yeah. you know, we're trying to aggressively uh, get it at a, a, a great price point. Okay. And then, of course, uh, the gamepad controller is separately, so it's 249 The dock is 99 And then we have a kind of a multitude of accessories you can use with it. Of course, we make wireless gaming mice and uh, mouse pads and whatnot. So there's all of those things that you can use with any of these PCs. Or you can use the stuff you already have, too. That's the great thing about it. It's a full PC, so use whatever you okay. want. Okay. And then uh, with the Blade Pro, um, it's starting at uh, 2299 that's a that's a fair price for the power and this the this screen is customizable screen. Yeah, when you think about it though, we originally launched like three years ago with the very first blade at twenty seven ninety nine, and we brought it down to twenty four ninety nine, and now we brought it down to twenty two ninety nine. Yeah. So as long as our fans continue to support us and keep picking up these systems, we're going to do everything we can to keep driving their price point down and making better and higher quality products. Yeah. And I, I love that you all are using the, the the latest gen processors that just came out of the Haswells. You're keeping up. You're keeping up with the times. Yeah, we have a great partner at Intel. Has been really uh, impressive and helpful with us.
and really doing everything they can to make sure we have cool systems that are powered by a great uh, CPU. Okay, well, you know what? I, I use a Mac now, but I, as I was telling your, your other person, this this might sway me to, to hey, you know, like, out again. I don't I, know how to do it, but if you want to hack and toss up, you know, like <laughs> you put it up on your website and you have the, uh, uh, just what you're looking for. Yeah, this is really beautiful. So, man, thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Um, yeah, ma make sure you, you check out Razor, this great company. What's the website? that, that it's, our, our uh, Razorzone.com. It's R-A-Z-E-R-Z-O-N-E.com. All right, you heard it there. I am super excited. I'm getting to talk to Brad Muir, Muir the you got it. developer, the creative mind, the brain behind Double Fine's newest Kickstarter, Massive Chalice. Massive Chalice. So for the people who haven't seen the Kickstarter video or don't know any backstory, go ahead and just give a brief overview of the game. Yeah, okay, so it's a tactical strategy game set on what we call the epic timeline. So you'll be the immortal ruler of this kingdom uh, that's being uh, attacked by uh, this, this demonic army. And the twist is that the invasion is going to last hundreds of years. Right. So it's, uh, the game's going to be split very similar to XCOM, where you have um, a tactical view, where you'll be controlling your, your heroes and fighting these demons in this human-scale tactical view. And then the other side of the game is a very high-level strategic view, where you'll be managing the entire realm, making decisions about that. But then the epic timeline is, is the real twist. Your heroes are going to age as time flows on the, uh, on the strategic map. And those heroes are going to age and then eventually die. So you need to be deciding which ones you're going to take and retire so that they can have children that will then grow up to be uh, the heroes in your next generation. Even better fighters yep. for later. Yep. Gotcha. So following the success of what was definitely touted as the biggest Kickstarter for a video game. And with, well, Tim is, Tim yeah, is I mean, a very likable man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it seems like a, a absolutely brilliant move for you guys to do another one. Is there any disadvantage to using the internet to fund a video game. Well, I, I mean, this time around, like we haven't finished. Like there were a lot of risks associated right. with it. Like we haven't, we hadn't finished Broken Age. Um, we weren't sure how people were going to react to that. And right. uh, like, I people don't really know who I am compared right. to Tim. Like right. it's like I've, you know, I've worked at Double Fine for a long time, but I'm not, you know, I'm not this like living legend kind of person. And it's also not based. It's a it's a new IP. It's not right. based on any like you know old existing franchise that we're digging up and trying to reboot. So there's a lot of risks associated with it, but. The response has been really awesome. We already hit our goal, and things are, yeah, th things are going great. Yeah, congratulations. But um, disadvantages for working directly with people, I, it's mostly upside. I mean, I think the biggest thing is that you just get buried under tons and tons of suggestions. And it's like, I want to make sure that we're <laughs> like we're trying to listen to everything, but it's like, right. especially in those first few days. Right, and especially was, suggestions from non-game developers. Yeah, from, and right, from, it's like people don't always know what's feasible and right. what's not within the budget right. that we're asking for and things like that. So I actually like that there's this sort of cool educational piece to right. it where it's like, we can kind of show people right. like, like what you know how much things cost roughly or like what, what is what is kind of within the realm of possibility and what is not right. like as we go through this, which is cool, but. It's really awesome and, listening to everybody's suggestions. Yeah, I mean, another thing that is awesome, just as a backer, which I back. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Gonna, can I give you a um, hug right now? Uh, sure. Okay. Thanks, got Chad. got hugged by Brad Muir. Thanks, um, uh, Thanks so, for backing, Chad. So uh, I love the fact that there's so much video content made by Two Player Productions. And does that ever kind of get in the way, or is it's just always just a great experience? It's been, I mean... It's, it's a little weird, but everybody at the studio is really used to it now mm -hmm. because the Broken Age documentary that they're doing has been going on for like over a year now. Right. And so it's like, yeah, it was pretty jarring at first where it's like <laughs> they're filming meetings and it's like, you know, you got, there's like a boom mic like, like right above your head kind of the whole right. time. And you're, you're just like, right. you don't know what the hell you should be right, doing. Right. It's just I'm like sure really that's weird. not unnatural at all. <laughs> Uh, but like it's I think that people have really gotten used to it and they're really good at like staying out of the way and just trying to like you know capture what's actually happening right and I think like after a few minutes of it the weirdness kind of goes away and you kind of like get into a groove of like actually doing stuff and, right. and working on it normally yeah. you ignore uh, it move on you try to but it's a little weird like this camera right here this is looking right. at me it's right. it's the enemy it's the enemy <laughs> it's kind of it is yeah. kind of weird like yeah. it takes some getting used to it yeah. I, don't, I still don't think we're there but yeah. it's cool those guys are amazing like good like that whole the video for our kickstarter uh for massive chalice kickstarter it was done in 20 or 48 hours like two Merg. days three guys at two player that's it and they did the whole thing and edited it and i don't know yeah. they're amazing like cool. shout out to those guys cool, they're, cool. they're fantastic cool cool so with both uh, brazen which was your yes. was the um uh amnesia fortnite 
game that yep. you made, and yep. uh, Iron Brigade. Those were both really multiplayer focused. Yeah. Is Massive Chalice also going to focus on multiplayer? No, Not you know, focused, I mean, but people have asked us about it, but we're really focused on the single player experience. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like this kind of you know turn based experience really benefits from like being able to take your time and like right. think about your choices and stuff. So I don't know if it's like the greatest fit for multiplayer, but. In the XCOM reboot, uh, the XCOM Enemy Unknown, the, the new XCOM game, like I think that they did a really great job with like a very point-based kind of multiplayer setup that where there's a timer for your turn. Like there's definitely a way that it, it, we could make it work. Right. So we're not like shutting the door on it completely, but the budget for the game is is relatively small. It's pretty modest. So I think that we really want to focus on the single player experience. Stay uh, focused first and foremost. But I love multiplayer games. Like right. I like as you mentioned, like Iron Brigade and uh, Brazen. Both heavy multiplayer focus. Like I'm sure I'll, you know. You'll think of it sometime. Sure, I'm You'll sure we'll. I'm sure we'll be doing there. more multiplayer stuff we'll in the future. There. Good, yeah. good. Now the uh, Kickstarter video focused a lot on um, combat and, and talking about how um, you would you would have these characters that would fight on your behalf. And as a person who really enjoys city building, what what sort is there going to be city building or is that sort of pushed to the to the side? We're, well, we're trying to you know it's like looking at the strategic layer. We're trying to take a lot of the concepts that you would uh, that you would have in XCOM and push them out into the bloodlines, like this right. whole bloodline system about like you know which heroes are you going to pair together to have children in these keeps that are around the realm. Uh, so we really want to like focus more on that, like right. where the um, things like researching uh, technology and like forging new uh, new items and equipment. Right. We're thinking that that we can maybe take that and kind of push it into this bloodline system because that's that's like a big focus of the game. Right. And and I like the fact that we could t you know take a little bit of the base building aspect out of it and center it more around these human characters. That's okay. another thing I really like about it is that it's you know you, I want you to get really attached to these human characters and it's like. If it's a building that's researching your technology versus like you know these two heroes that are retired this in a keep family, together yeah. that are like working on it and you yeah. know through the ages these like two mages and their their family their bloodline is like researching the the demonic technology for you you get really attached to them like right. I think it's another great way right. to get people really attached to these uh, these characters and then it's very poignant when they die right you know it's like it's like you're like, attached oh, to them and you want to see on that them. thing and. Yeah, I, guess like, I, think gone. It's, I think it's cool because you know as they age, like you're definitely gonna lose them. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that you'll not only get attached to the heroes, but also get attached to their surname, the bloodline, right. and you'll want to see that. Like you'll want to sort of like take care of that and make sure that it, like goes into the future. And I think right. that's a really that's a really like compelling piece of the game that I want to I want to support. Good. And then in it, you had uh, one you know uh, uh, concept art that had multiple cities kind of around a realm. And when you're talking about bloodlines, I was wondering. Are those geographically located? Like, am I gonna? Is there gonna be like a mini game where I have to be like, I really want this lady to go move to this town, so now I have to get her over there sure, to sire sure. that bloodline? Or We've, I mean, definitely no mini games. Like, right. Dang. <laughs> we want to keep we want to keep it simpler. Where you know, just I want that wooing mini game. When you when you make those decisions, like you know, they'll just. They'll just happen. They'll like, just, just do I don't think we need any mini games or okay. like quick time events for yeah. for that stuff. Well, and and, and in the storyline, you are the king. So the right. king decrees. The king, the king or queen. You are oh, the or immortal queen ruler. Is. Yes. Yeah. True. 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 Decrees. Hey, go be with that person. Sure. Sure. And that's. I mean, it's a really interesting thing. The way that we talk about it is that it's like it's like a royal marriage. That mm. the the ruler, like the heroes, are kind of like. They're really trusting that the that the ruler will make the right decisions and and put them with the right partner to like have you know have children and continue those bloodlines. But um, we had talked about like like when you make those decisions, having it play out where they would actually have to kind of organ trail up the. You know, right. it would take them months to right. actually get to the keep right. because, again, we talk about we try to point everything at this epic timeline concept, where when you're running the flow of time on the map, it's like you know in XCOM that's you know days are gonna pass, right. but in Massive Chalice like months and years are gonna pass. So like you know thinking about like like yeah like slowing that way down, like what falls out of that, and that could be a really cool thing where like if you have a keep that's really far away, you know you you send two people off to it, it's gonna take them like a year to you know eventually get up there and like establish the the bloodline in that keep. Right. So one final question. The game is called Massive Chalice, but I haven't quite seen anything. What is the Massive Chalice? You're trying to reforge it. How sure, does, sure. How does the combat integrate, or has that been fully? We're trying to, I mean, 
uh, part of it is that like I'm uh, Tim Schafer and I are like very different kinds of game designers. Like he's a very like top down game designer. Like starts with the world and the fiction and the mm -hmm. characters and stuff, and then builds downwards towards the game mechanics to make sure that everything is cohesive. And I'm more of like a like a bottom up game designer where it's like focus on the game mechanics first, and then we'll layer the fiction on top of it and make sure that the fiction makes sense to match the mechanics. Right. And like both are totally you know totally valid. And I think it's really awesome that like. We have all sorts of different kind of creative people that want to make games and are allowed to make games at Double Fine. It's amazing. But uh, as for the Massive Chalice, it's like I really want it to p play like a pivotal role in the game's story. But, you know, it's like the mechanics aren't locked down yet. So, you know, you think about that bottom up thing. It's like if the mechanics are not locked down, I don't really want to like explain put, to put That's too fine. many things in the you know but it's like we have some really cool ideas about like how the chalice integrates into the bloodlines of the heroes because that's like a really important aspect of the game and how that relates to the demon faction and like you know we want i want all these things to feel really linked together so that it's the world just feels like really cohesive so cool. yeah we'll be talking about the massive chalice later and the like what it, the actual what it looks like chalice. and what it is and what it does and like why you have to reforge it and all this other stuff we'll be talking about that later but um yeah Cool. We'll talk about it later. We have to talk about it now. Great, great. Well, we'll, we'll have to do another interview then. We'll talk about it later, yeah. Great. We, well, can't, thank you. we can't talk about everything right yeah. now. No, you don't want to give all your cards all yeah, at once. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, thank you so much for this interview. You have Thanks been for awesome. Having me. Thanks for that awkward hug, too, Oh, Chad. you're welcome. I'm sorry Anytime. it was, I'm sorry it was so awkward. That was the first time I've ever hugged you in my Anytime. life. And it happened on camera. Yeah. And yeah. I've been thinking about it. It's like, yeah, sorry so about that. Is there a, a link or a URL for people to go help back the project? Yeah, yeah. You can just go to MassiveChalice.com, and that will just redirect to the Kickstarter page that's up there right now. Perfect. Go donate money. Go reforge the Massive Chalice. Thanks. Hey, and welcome to the Square Enix booth, E3 2013. Oh, my God. Me and Lamar here. Uh, are you excited? Yeah. I it, am. It's, it's been a day, but I've been wanting to see Square Enix for the longest. They're such a good development company. They really are. And what's what's one of the biggest franchises they have? I mean, mm. Square, uh, 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 let me just think. Uh, I, 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 I bet it would be a, the final version of this the game. The final they version. They won't and come out with any more, no, I'm it's sure. it's a fantasy that we're having yeah, that they won't come out with anymore. No more. They're no going to keep doing fantasy. 20, 30, 40. So I don't know if you remember. This is yeah. at the very beginning of the day. We were talking about... Uh, Final Fantasy and during during the Sony yeah. press conference, yeah, yeah. and I was a little confused over what what Final Fantasy games were coming out. I've since done some research and okay. I found out. Tell me which ones. Let's start from the beginning. We got ten Final Fantasy ten and Final Fantasy ten two. Those, those are both already came, those are, came out. Okay, they're coming out again for the PlayStation Vita. The oh, okay. okay, okay. Then you have Final Fantasy thirteen, which is actually Lightning's Return, so it's a sequel to Final Fantasy 13, but they can't do 13 2 because they already came out with that. Okay? Because <laughs> I remember playing 13. Right. But somehow she returns right. with the same game number. Right. Right. What are they doing? Okay, okay, we're not we're not finished. Oh, we're not finished. More. Right, yes. So Final Fantasy 14 okay. is an MMO about around Final Fantasy. Probably gotta pay a monthly fee. Most likely. To play that. Maybe okay. not. I Maybe don't they're like those going free to play. Games. Maybe, okay. perhaps. Okay, now you would think we're done, right? We right, just wait, covered that's it, that's it. technically we covered five games, four games. Yeah, I we're can't done. do math. We go home, right. right? Right, no. Uh -oh. No. They announced at the Sony press conference that there's Final Fantasy fifteen, which is different than Final Fantasy thirteen, Lightning Returns, and ten and ten two or fourteen. And this was for the PS4. Correct. And that's their big regular normal no, it's, it's Final get, Fantasy. Get excited. Get excited. Okay. All so right. we are Woo! gonna we're done with that. We we're actually going to check out Final Fantasy fourteen. Shannon is a huge Final Fantasy fan, yeah, well, so she's going to be the one absolutely. who kind of And what's this right behind us? Is so this the Lightning? This is Lightning's Return. Okay. So it's in the same universe as Final Fantasy thirteen. Is this a PS3 or going to be a PS4 version? Uh, you know, I'm actually not. I, I it believe, might be both. I believe that this it looks is really good. PS3. Um, don't tell anybody because even though we're on air, don't keep it a secret. But I always thought lightning was kind of hot. But don't, oh, don't, don't, don't oh tell. Oh my god! Don't. Look at that pink hair. Yeah. <laughs> Got a thing for colored hair. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. uh, so there is Final Fantasy thirteen Lightning's yeah, Return. Exactly. Another thing that Square Enix introduced, oh. which you, sir, are yeah. very excited because about. Because a lot of my audience loves this game. Is uh, what, what is this called? Kingdom. Kingdom. Of 
the heart. No, Kingdom Hearts. Oh, no, Hearts. Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> now, what we're seeing here is actually not Kingdom Hearts uh, 3, which was announced and... This uh, looks good for it. Yeah, this is the HD remix, right? This is Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD remix. It looks really so good. the original Kingdom Hearts and added a really nice layer of HD textures. So who was this marketed to? Just people who, who got the PS3 who wanted to play Kingdom Hearts but never could? I have found out. Through my research here at E3 2013, All right. there are a lot of Kingdom Hearts fans. Yes. Tons of them. Yes. And so this it, speaks to them. Uh, if, if you want to either A, uh, experience it for the first time, maybe you played Kingdom Hearts 2 and it was really fun, but yeah, absolutely. Kingdom Hearts 1 was just too old, okay. um, you can now play through Kingdom Hearts 1. Very or, nice. You're such a super fan that all you were missing was playing through Kingdom Hearts one more time. Yes. You can now do it with HD. Life. Exactly, exactly. It and looks fantastic. It really does look good. Now, they're not showing us the Kingdom Hearts 2. Three. That was re the 3, sorry, three. that was released. Right. They're not showing us that. Right. Not, Shame not on yet. them. Not out here. Okay. But that, that gave, I mean, the applause that happened, what I saw on Twitter, people were going crazy. With right. this new Kingdom Hearts, they just—they were losing their minds. That right. There's even one announced, so that is—that's right. awesome. That's, they got some diehard fans. Oh, big! But you time. get to play with Disney characters. I mean, how cool is that? Big time. So yeah. some other things that they have announced is Deus Ex, uh, The Fall, which is uh, another Deus Ex title. Re I'm really—I love Deus Ex. Okay, I have never played so, that. So um, I need to find out more information about that. Okay. Um, what else have they done? Uh, they're, they're pimping Saints Row 4. No Saints Row, okay. And, uh, oh, Thief. Thief. Let's talk about Thief. Yes. It's not, it's not available. There's a, there's a uh, like theater. like Assassin's Creed? Similar. It I, was before Assassin's Creed. Okay. This okay. was, if you wanted a stealth game where you hide around in the shadows and kill people for fun. That's me. That was, th you're right. That, right. Me yeah. and you. That's yeah. what we that's do. That's what I do, do for life. fun, right? Yeah, okay. Thief was your game. Wow. Back in... 2003, 2002, wow. okay. like back in the day, okay. that was the assassin game that you killed people in stealth. Gotcha. So now it's back. Now it's back, and it's, it doesn't even have a byline. It's just thief because it's been it's like Doctor Who. It's, it's been it's out like, it's so like, long. Duh, you know what? It's right. Going, We're what bringing it, is. it back. So uh, we haven't been able to see that, but very, is it very a remix excited. Or a com complete, complete new game. Complete new game. Nice. New nice. Game. Okay. So let's go ahead and head on over to Final Fantasy, uh, third. No, 14. 14 online. Get my numbers right. Okay. Um, where okay. we will actually get exclusive access to jump the line okay. and get into their theater. Eorzea, a blighted realm, riddled with false gods. Twice now it has eluded the Empire's grasp, twisted beyond all reckoning, rotten nigh to the core. O oh, mighty Ifrit, Lord of the Inferno and Champion of the Sun, thy humble servant summon thee! Your souls will burn for eternity! Must be saved. Surrender yourselves unto me. I would feast upon your ether. None shall stand against the wind. It falls to us to deliver the misguided masses from their ignorance. I surrender myself on the condition you spare the innocents. For victory and fortune. Stride fearless into the inferno, for we are by fire reborn! I must trust in my ability to remember the faces of my enemies. This dark, stifling presence. We are being watched. The Enterprise is no ordinary ship, and I am no ordinary captain. In case you'd forgotten, Gaius, it's Sid Garland.
but the beginning of another. The tale of the Crystal's demise. <laughs> So announced this morning, some rather exciting news uh, from our development team in Japan, uh, confirming that we'll be releasing the game on PS4 next year, as well as obviously the PS3 and Windows PC versions in uh, August 27th this year. With Twit, I'm Shannon Morse, coming to you from E3 2013. Haha, <laughs> surprise! I made it on camera. What, what? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Hi, Chad. Hey, Shannon. So, I just checked out Final Fantasy XIV. It's this brand new MMO style game that's from the Final Fantasy series, of course. Wow, okay, so you just did that, and then I just checked out Thief. You checked out Thief. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Final okay, Fantasy. Go okay, go ahead. This is kind of near and dear to my heart. I've been playing since, like, you know, early days of, like, the 2D style Final Fantasy, like, you know, 4 and 5 back in the day and of course you always have certain special characters in your heart like the chocobos that and whatnot loved. some of my favorite par parts about final fantasy 14 is the fact that you still have sid which is a very famous character oh, good. yeah you still have the chocobos and okay. you can ride the chocobos they even take damage for you in fights i'm oh. really excited for that like when you're on them or off of them when you're off of them they can so act like, as your buddy out. yeah they'll like peck at the monsters and Perfect. stuff like that so they love you too the fact that this is an mmo made me think maybe it's just on PC, but it's actually also on PS3. It will be released on PS4 as well in 2014. It's really cool because you can play as a conjurer, a gladiator. You can play as a healer and like a tank type of character. Right. So you get to choose a specific character that you feel that you would be best as. And then you can change around that character. You, you aren't set to a specific look. Uh, you have the ability to kind of switch it around, kind of like what you can do in WoW and with Skyrim and games like that, which is also a very interesting aspect because I'm, I'm not, I've never played a Final Fantasy MMO before, but right. from my experience with like, you know, 7, 8, 9, 13 and whatnot, right. you've never really gotten to do that before. Right. You're stuck with like, right. you know, your the, lightning character or whoever yeah. that you have. Yeah. So it sounds like a really cool game. Um, so one question, I, the cross-platform stuff, can all those cross-platform people play together? I hope so. Yeah. See, that's the thing. They didn't really say that you could or could not play right. together. They also didn't mention a monthly price, but given right. it's an MMO online multiplayer It'll game, most you might start. have to pay something around 15 bucks or so, which I would worry about because I'm not really willing to pay that much amount of money. Right. But it is Final Fantasy, so... So cool. tell me about. So I, well, I, one more question. As a Final Fantasy player, this looks compelling. This looks really compelling. Okay. I would say the graphics are a little bit lower than Final Fantasy 13 and some of the newer, higher quality games that they have. Right. But I think that's because it's an online experience, and you they're trying to, to bring this to people without having a market. bunch of lag and right. a bunch of you know terrible. Uh, at issues with graphics, right. so it, it's going to be really cool. I'm very excited to see it. They have some gameplay going on behind us, and I'm kind of excited to check out that too. So hopefully, I can butt my way in there and check it out. Right, awesome. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you about the first. Um, it was a exclusive sort of area. We weren't allowed to film anything, so I can't Ooh. show you any footage. But uh, Thief it has been a franchise that's been around for a very long time. Yeah. They were probably the very first assassin type game. And so in this version, they're kind of switching it up where it's, fir it's first person. And so your view is very, very intimate. Yeah. And as you're walking through the world, you can see your hands. Ooh. And when you scale walls, you see the character use oh, a grappling really hook cool. to kind of jump on top. So that was a neat aspect that I wasn't expecting. That sounds very like um, uh, Mirror's Edge. Did you ever right. play that game? Yes, very, very much. And very some first of the parkour person. sort of yeah. climbing on stuff. Uh, absolutely. Um, so in Thief, one thing that I really like about it is you're not really a good guy. <laughs> you you are there to, you are a thief. To, th to steal for your own benefit. <laughs> and so that's what we were seeing a playthrough of is he was stealing a priceless item from a duke's home oh. because the whole town was in riots over some other political oh, that's thing. that's awesome. You were, you were taking advantage of the situation just to get money. I don't know if money. I'd be able to play that. I might be like, oh, but I'm doing bad things. No, it, it's, uh, it seems awesomely in a gray area. Ooh. And so there's a, there's a real motivation to go steal money and... And, you yeah, know, of course. and try to and so go up to guards and pickpocket them. There's some nice pickpocketing mechanics. 
And then on top of that, there were some really great mechanics with um, instinct. It seems like a lot of these games are kind of like, they give you a sixth sense to play with. Right. And the instinct in this game was really nice. It highlighted uh, a few objects that you may not have noticed. And then also there was uh, a way for you to, instead of seeing like an outline of a character, like. Some games, if you need to see through a wall, they'll show you this obvious outline. Yeah, of course. What they did was they showed... And it's kind of annoying. It's super annoying. Yeah. It takes you out of the game. It's not mm -hmm. at, at all. So what they did was they showed you audio audio footsteps. If there was a footstep on the other side of the wall. You could Ooh. see the noise pattern. That's and cool. And it seemed way more natural. And it even it, it's you have to use your own skill to kind of figure out are they walking in that direction. You can't tell which way they're facing. Ooh. You just see the footsteps. It was a, it was a really that's it seems really like a interesting. Really good game design. So um, when is this one being released? Did so they say? No word yet on oh, release. Oh man! Uh, at least that Come I can find Square out. Come on, Square Enix! They're teasing us here. I know, I know. Uh, but uh, it would be for next gen consoles and awesome. play and uh, 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 the computer. Yes, the PC. Of course. There you go. That's of the word I was looking for. So next gen uh, Xbox and PlayStation Four and the computer for Thief. Well, they're definitely kicking it out of the ballpark this Tons year with all games. the new Final Fantasy releases and Thief. And yep. There's even like Kingdom Hearts 3. Yep. I'm so stoked for this yep. year. There's yep. excellent video games coming out. Very, very <sighs> much so. Hey, and Lamar. Yes, it's been Chad. a long day. It's been a long, long day. And we are finally wrapping up our My feet are dead. three coverage. My feet <laughs> are on fire. Uh, well, we had a ball, didn't we? Oh my gosh, so many yes. great games. Really, I hope that you enjoyed the coverage uh, to the viewer out there. Yeah, I mean, we got to uh, talk to I Just We got to talk to I Just Did. Call the, the little Call of Duty. We checked out Call of Duty. We checked out, uh, I, I saw The Witcher 3. It was, we, it I, was just, it was tons like, of interviews. This, and you know what? There's so much stuff that we just did not get to see. Right. I thought we could hit everything on one day. It is a little not, bit difficult. It is a little bit difficult. difficult. So and some it, of the things that you, well, you would mi missed. What were some of the things that we would yeah. like to get to? Oh man, I, we didn't get to get over to the Xbox no. One. Didn't As, get to yeah, Xbox, Xbox One. Xbox One. It was just so many people yeah. over there. It was really hard to get get over there. So, you know, I would say that's that's one of the things I really wanted I really to go wanted see. I wanted to see Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed, Black Flag, and perhaps oh, uh, Batman. Okay. Oh yeah, the Batman is time. Batman is right there, it's and I right couldn't there, go see it. And we just can't go see it. Um, yeah, and then also Destiny. Destiny was really big. We just didn't get a chance yeah, to stop by yeah. the booth. But but, but I'm, I'm happy with everything we saw. We got to, you know you got to, you got to go to Sony. I got to go to Sony event. Yeah, yeah, that was Sony event. That was awesome. Yeah, very and, cool. And, so, and the booth and yeah everything. Yeah, everything. So everything everything was overwhelming but wonderful yep. and. Uh, just happy that you all got to share this with us on, on the Twitch special. This cool. is awesome. Well, if you yeah. want to check out more of our Twit coverage of all things special and all things awesome, head on over to twit.tv. This is part of our special series, so you can download more uh, videos like it at twit.tv slash specials. We do them uh, sort of sporadically whenever there's a big event, so yes. no defined schedule for that. Uh, thank you so much for checking out our E3 coverage. Yeah. I hope that you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope that it helped your fix for gaming news. Yeah. Now, let's see if we can go sneak over to Batman before we get out of here. Let's do it. All right. Let me, let's do it in the shadow. In the shadows. Ooh.